I'm Randy the Natural Couture. This is BJ Penn. This is John Fitch. Hey, I'm Ariane Celeste. I'm Forrest Griffin. I am Fyodor. You are watching MMA Fix. MMA Fix here with Tough 12 lightweight finalist, Michael Johnson. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, a little dry mouth from the weight cut, but uh, some off and on, you know, exciting. You have been at these, uh, we're at the media open workouts, and you've been here for almost like two hours. Did dry mouth a little bit from all the talking? Uh, a little bit of the talking, a little bit of the working out, your weight cut. It's all coming into one big cotton mouth swab. So. We got we to gotta get you some water. We can't have it yet. I know, can't have it yet. Tomorrow, though. So you tried out about, what, three or four times and it's finally not, made it? Yeah, that's about third time trying out, so I finally made it. And you know, it's a uh, blessing in disguise that I actually got to be on this season, you know, with such great coaches and great teammates and uh, great competitors in this season. It's uh, really been a blessing for me. What was it about this time around? Um, I don't know, maybe the combination of things, maybe because I came in with an attitude, it was like, yeah, I really don't care if you guys put me on this season or not, I'm not, I'm going to keep trying. I'm sick of trying. I'm yeah, I know, so I'm like, I'm sick of following you guys around the country, you know, put me on or not, you know, either it was that or they're just like, we're getting sick and tired of seeing this kid show up every time, so I just put his ass on the show, and nah, sorry. Good for you, because you made it to the finals. I know, so just like I said, you know, maybe it was a blessing that I didn't make eight and nine, and I'm um, here right now, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for it, so. So let's talk about the great coach that you had, GSP. How was he for you? Uh, he was great. You know, everything I expected. Um, like I always say, you know, the best thing about him was that he was more of a training partner than a coach. You know, he worked out with us every day, and, um, you know, he brought his coaches in to handle the coaching aspect of it. And, uh, you know, he worked out as a great coach as well. Uh, so I was really uh, blessed and privileged to have such a great fighter and a great coach on my side. He also brought some wonderful people to help you out, Mike Tyson, Freddie Roach. What was that like for you? Uh, it was great seeing the world-class coaches and athletes that he brought in to help us. You know, I don't think Koscheck did that for his team. And, you know, um, George was able to bring the guys that made him such a great fighter in to, you know, uh, show us the way. And like I said, like you said, Freddie Roach, Mike Tyson, John Danaher, um, Sean Williams, some great Olympic wrestlers. And, you know, the list just goes on and on. If I'm forgetting anybody, sorry. But, you know, every coach she brought in really uh, helped us out. And in the finals are two members of Team GSP. As you're watching the show and you get to see the differences in, in coaching between Koscheck and GSP, uh, is it different from what you expected while you were filming? I mean, did you see the differences while you're filming? Like, hey, my coach is better than yours? Uh, yeah, you could definitely see it, you know, the way his team came into the house after practice. They're all beat up, worn out. Um, it's like he's putting these guys through the ringer, and they got six weeks to get ready, and there's possibly a fight in four times in six weeks. So he ran their practice more uh, like get in, work out, work out hard, work out hard. On the other hand, we, uh, George, ran our practices a more of a, you know, like mental aspect. Like let's learn a lot more, and then we'll handle the sparring and the hard work and take, uh, take care of itself. So I could definitely see it, and you know, so as the season went on, some of Koscheck's teammates actually wanted to jump ship and come to our teams because, you know, they saw the coaches that we were bringing in, and I don't think Koscheck really brought in any coaches. You are actually the underdog going into this fight by plus 150. Are you betting on yourself, and why, why do you think you are the underdog? I'm not betting on anything, and uh, actually, I didn't want to know what the odds were against me. I just Thank sorry you for that, but uh, you know, I really don't. I really don't care. I mean, I don't see what people see as an underdog just because he won all his fights by a rear naked choke and then won a decision. Um, you know, matchup makes fights, and, you know, who's going to know what happens? But, um, you know, if people are betting against me, fine. You know, have fun losing your money, and uh, I'll have fun winning my money when I win this contract. So uh, we'll look at it that way. Fighting a teammate is always a big controversial question in the UFC. I mean, you just met Brookins on the show, but you guys became good friends. What's it like to have to face him in the cage? Um, it's not necessarily hard. You know, we can, both of us are professionals. Both of us coming, coming into this knew that it was going to come down to, you know, friends fighting friends. And, you know, like I said, it's business. We got to put feelings aside and we'll get in there. And regardless of the outcome, we'll still be friends afterwards. Have you seen him? Yeah, so you know, we've hung out quite a bit. Uh, you know, we ran out, talked, took a couple of pictures. Uh, you know, we're real good friends, and uh, I like that. Does he look different to you, or have you been studying him at all? I uh, haven't seen him work out. Uh, he doesn't look different to me at all. I think um, I've actually put on a lot more weight and muscle than him, and I think I'm going to be the stronger and better fighter.
Now, GSP was a great coach for you on the show. Did you have any contact with him after? Um, yeah, we stayed in touch after a couple times. It's kind of hard to stay in touch with him now, knowing that he's got a fight coming up next weekend. And, you know, but um, after he gets done with his fight, uh, we'll, I'll get up there and I'll get some more training. And so I'm looking forward to actually going up to Montreal next weekend and watching that fight. Now, uh, Kostchak has never been a fan of Raw Vegas TV, so we're just going to ask you, wait, what you think of, of him as a person. Did you, did you find him to be a, a guy who's a lot misunderstood or, or do you think he deserves the, the poor reputation that he has? Yeah, it's kind of a hard one to say, you know, like the, like hearing his comments on the show and everything, you know, I guess the show needed a bad guy and Kostchuk had to play that role. But you know, um, outside of the show and off the cameras, he was actually a real cool guy. I got to hang out with him and, you know, I didn't mind him. And, you know, we talked back and forth and, you know, uh, talked trash back and forth to each other, you know, joked around, so. You know, I think he had to play that role and, you know, he had to step in and take all the heat. But um, off the camera, you know, I didn't mind anybody.